What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another Adobe Live. My name is Idara Ekpo, and I'm going to be your host for today. And I'm really, really excited as today we are joined by artist and designer Heather Crank. Um, Heather, how are you doing today? I'm great. Hello, oh. everybody. Hello. Awesome. Really excited to um, dive in deep with Heather today as she walks us through learning the basics of creating style frames, telling a story, and generating storyboards using Adobe Firefly and Adobe Express. Then we're going to take our ideas into Photoshop to create some high fidelity um, storyboards. So I'm really, really excited. Please drop in the chat where you are joining from. I am here in not so very kind of sunny, but we're getting into winter time, Arizona. <laughs> How about you, Heather? Where are you joining? from i'm in oregon and uh, seasons are changing here too it's uh except we're gonna get snow so oh yeah can't relate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cannot relate at all but that's beautiful <laughs> please drop where y'all are joining from in the chat and as always thank you so much for joining adobe live uh, make sure you join the, the adobe live community subscribe to our youtube channel and follow us at adobe live on instagram for the latest streams, updates, and more. So really excited for today. Heather, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you so you can go ahead and introduce yourself um, and talk a little bit about what we're learning learn today. Okay. Hello, everybody. This is my first Adobe Live. Super excited to be here. I am a graphic designer, motion graphics artist, art director, and AI artist. I'm also on the programming committee for the Ben Design Conference. That's actually coming up after Adobe Max in October. So that's me in a nutshell. Oh, so exciting. What, what <laughs> do we have for today? Um, what's kind of like the plan that you want to kind of go through? Okay, so for today, what we're going to do, I have a little presentation here. Um, I'm going to go through the history of storyboards and style frames. We're going to cover what they are, why you should use them, why they're going to save your bacon. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'm going to hop into Firefly and Adobe Express. I'm going to show you uh, how and why these are amazing tools for this process. And then we'll get into Photoshop and we'll actually lay out a couple of frames. We'll see how far we can get. I'm not sure we'll get the whole storyboard, but we'll get maybe three or four. So oh, that's the plan. Perfect. So excited. And let me already say that this, um, I know you're going to go through this presentation, but the deck already just looks so ah. beautiful. So I'm excited. <laughs> so if you. Of course, if y'all have any questions um, for Heather, be sure to drop them in the chat, whether you are on YouTube or on Behance, drop it in the chat. So then that way I can ask throughout the chat. We can make sure this is as engaging as it can be. But all right. Awesome. Let's go ahead, Heather. Hello. Um, my name is Heather Crank. I'm sure you know that by now. And that's really my last name. Um, this photo I love because the top image here shows me now and the bottom image is a picture my husband took of me when I started my creative journey. Mm. So it's kind of been a full circle thing for me. Um, let me get over here. Okay, so I am an art director, motion graphics designer, AI artist. Um, I run a design studio called Cremonti, mm -hmm. and we're out of Oregon. We consider ourselves rebellious moonbeams. We're a collection of designers and artists. Um, and I work a lot in AI. In fact, since 2022, I think it was the spring of 2022, I started getting involved. And mm -hmm. so Right off the bat, before we even get into this, I want to talk about AI ethics, which I know is a huge hot button uh, topic. Please drop your comments <laughs> if you have any. Um, but what I want to address is I really love what Adobe is doing uh, with AI and the ethics part of it. In Firefly right now, what they've done is they've embedded meta tags, which means mm. there are content credentials in each image. So you can see what program was used, who created it, and when they created it. And if they set it up, if an artist sets it up, you can actually link your website to that to, to the meta tag, which is great because it kind of advertises you. Mm -hmm. So they're advocating for artist rights, which I love. Um, they're kind of ahead of the curve. I don't know anybody else who's doing this yet. I'm sure it's coming. Mm -hmm. And on top of all of that, which is uh, an amazing thing, is that you can use their images commercially, which copyright was a huge, huge issue for a mm -hmm. super long time. 
So um, I'm a big advocate for AI. I think it's wonderful. Um, I also feel like it's a tool that people are going to use more and more or be assisted by more and more over the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. So it's a really great thing to jump into. And the Firefly app is amazing in the way it's integrated into all the Adobe software, seamless. So I really highly recommend if you haven't used it yet, you hop in. Okay, I'm off awesome. my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> If you have any comments that you want to talk about this before I move on, now is your chance. Okay. Perfect. Moving on. So um, let's get into style frames. Um, what are they? So today we're going to create some of these actual style frames, not these actual images, but style frames. Basically, you're going to set the tone and the look and feel uh, for your upcoming animation. And you get this out of the way right up front. It is a step after mood boards so that your client can sign off on the style before you build the animation. Mm. So, so important. Very important. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's a lot of work. And if you dig in and you don't do this up front, you will really regret it. Mm -hmm. um, some examples of style frames. You might try 2D, 3D, um, Art Deco, Synthwave. I've got some examples here on the left. I've got uh, realistic photography, illustrative. So there's all kinds of styles you can use. Once you set your style, then you're going to jump into storyboards. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming most people on this call have created a storyboard or mood board, and you probably know what this is, but I'm just <laughs> going to go through <laughs> and just kind of set the stage. So your storyboard is a chronological uh, sequence of images that you're going to create that basically block out your script. Mm -hmm. Part of my job that is so difficult when I'm working in animation are the transitions. So this makes that so much easier because once I block out a whole script with my storyboards, 60% of the work is already done. Mm. And then I can really narrow in on the transition part. Super important. Okay. Any questions so far? No, I think we're good. We did. So Jack dropped your um, Instagram and you're getting some comments on your, um, your work. So some compliments, oh, but if y'all you. have any questions, um, I'll be sure to read them as they come through. Okay. Thank you. All right. So if you're wondering, how do you make a storyboard? Well, you start with a script. Usually I get a script from a producer, an art director, eh, sometimes creative director, but usually the producer. And then you've, you've made your style frames, you know what the look is, you know what you want. You're gonna break down your script into the frames and we'll cover that a little bit later. And then you draw your frames. General rule of thumb, and I'm gonna apologize, I'm gonna throw math at you. I know it's early. <laughs> Nobody likes math in the morning, but <laughs> I'm just going to give you this really quick equation. So in general, one second of animation takes an hour. So if you have a 30 second animation, it's going to take you 30 hours just to create the basic structure. This is not deep in the animation. This is not, you're not in a review process yet. You're just creating it. So the way to break that down, if you have a 30 second animation, each story's storyboard corresponds to three to six seconds of your animation. I usually aim somewhere in the middle around four seconds. So if you take a 30 second animation and you take four seconds for each frame, you times, I in this instance, 40 times seven, that equals 28 seconds, that's pretty close. Mm -hmm. So I know I need about seven to eight um, frames for my storyboard. And it's just a way to kind of right off the bat, bat, you know how to set it up, you know how to create it, and you're rock and rolling. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a script example from a real client from about nine years ago. <laughs> this is what you'll get from your producer. Um, you'll see the script running down the left, in the center, there's a visual description. This is where a voiceover would go if you had one. And this client, who is so wonderful, actually created a mood board on the right column, which is not normal, um, mm -hmm. but very helpful. <laughs> 
visual people like visual examples. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So that's just what it would look like, what you'd probably see. You may have seen a million of these already. And here's a work in progress I have going right now. Um, these are separate storyboard frames. I have the voiceover and then the action below. Mm. And in the action, I include things like, what's the camera doing? What's the composition? Um, I'm sure Adara can relate to this completely. <laughs> composition. Uh, no, I can. <laughs> it's so important. It's how very, you, very important. <laughs> how, yeah, how you frame it, how you mm -hmm. light it, how you... Um, it impacts the entire story that's going to be told. Oh my God. It, it's, it, well, it also gives the emotion, the mm -hmm. story, yep. um, and also how you want to, for this instance, the pacing and the timing. So mm -hmm. you kind of break it down. A great storyboard is has varied and dynamic camera angles. So you wouldn't, unless you want to create tension, you wouldn't want one long same shot unless you're intending to do that to make people crazy. <laughs> And that works. I've mm -hmm. seen people do that. Um, you want dynamic and surprising transitions. Very important. Please develop your concept. Um, the better developed your concept is always the better the work. Mm -hmm. And telling a strong visual story, study the masters. Mm -hmm. So here are some quick examples. Jaws on the left. Um, mm. on the top, I've got North by Northwest and on the bottom right is Wally. -E. And a lot of people sketch out their storyboards by hand. I don't like to work like that because, uh, time is an issue for me. So I get right into digital storyboards. That way it can go right from Photoshop or Illustrator into mm -hmm. After Effects or whatever I'm working in. Okay. So. Any questions on the history of storyboards or style frames? No, I think we're good right now. Um, Izzy has given you some feedback of that. This whole presentation has been done so well. So thank you so <laughs> much for giving us this context Context for the beginning of this entire um, stream. And then Robert added that I think that Adobe has set some set has set the directions of ethical use of AI in the art and media communities and companies. And I would agree as well. Yes. They have. I really think uh, Adobe is a trendsetter. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like in the future, they are definitely somebody to watch. Yeah. Um, not being able to use your work commercially when you're a designer, it's a it's an issue. It's a big mm -hmm. problem. Um, and, and when I have clients coming to me saying, I want to use this technology and I can't, you know, it's a little mm -hmm. frustrating. Absolutely. And I've been relegated to comps only. So this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I'm excited. <laughs> All right. So um, let's really quickly here. I want to show you two ways to get into Adobe Express. Um, and I also want to talk a little bit about prompting and prompt engineering, which is really important. Um, so I'm going to open the text to image generator here in Firefly. If you haven't worked in Firefly, this is the interface. And down here in the bar is where you will type your prompt. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm writing prompts, I really try to really think beforehand about what I want to create. I want to visualize it. Um, because this is becoming a more and more common technology, there's a lot of visual noise out there. Mm, yeah. Standing apart is going to become harder and harder. So as a creative, um, if you had an 8 a.m. art history class, you are finally going to have your day. <laughs> <laughs> your history of artists, designers, mm -hmm. um, methodology. If you're a photographer, you can use prompts like 35 millimeter. You can designate mm -hmm. camera angles. You can... Um, well, Firefly has some baked in uh, actual settings, which I'll show you in a minute, but you can actually use your knowledge to create the imagery. So the more knowledge and skill you have as an artist and designer, the better your outcome is. Mm. Okay. So let's say, for example, I'm going to type, and this goes for 3D artists too. Um, if you want to create 3D modeling in Firefly, you can, you just need to use the right terminology. So if I type, uh, we're just going to do something generic here first. Generic, let's see, diamond, 
Uh, let's do this on a pink background. Can I spell when I'm nervous? I don't know <laughs> if I can spell when I'm nervous. <laughs> it's a little bit of a challenge. Okay, so I've got diamond on a pink background. I have not given any indication about what type of diamond I want. Mm -hmm. And it's giving me some pretty beautiful results right off the bat. Um, but let's say that I want this diamond to have a little bit more of a specific feeling because I have already done the reverse engineering beforehand with my style frames about what mm -hmm. I want to do. So maybe I want to go for a synth wave look. And if you don't know what that is, that's sort of an 80s neon kind of look. Mm. You, there are two ways that you can create this. Um, you can use the settings over here under the styles, or you can write it in the prompt. My advice on this is to try both. But okay. if you have the word in the prompt, and you also designate the style. Sometimes there is a conflict between between the two. One can cancel the other out. Okay. Um, so right now I'm just gonna type it and I do not have anything selected over here in my styles. So let's do diamond synth wave. And let's add, um, I want to add some neon elements to this. Hmm. Oh my gosh, me, me on. <laughs> and so this is going to generate a certain look mm -hmm. eventually. Okay, mm -hmm. so here we go. So now okay. we're in Synthwave. Now we have neon, we have some accents. Um, let's say I want to come, I, uh, which one do I like? I like this one better. Yeah, that so one is really nice. That's cool, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say I want to set this particular image here as my reference image. So mm. I want to generate things, but I like this image and I don't want to lose it. I'm going to use this set as reference image here under the edit bar. And then it gives me this dialog box here mm -hmm. where I can decide how much of the reference image I want it to go towards or how much I want it to go towards the prompt. Mm. I'm going to somewhere in the middle, I think is fine. Okay. And now I've got variations. So this is really great. Um, when I first oh. started using Firefly, I'd get pretty frustrated because I would mm -hmm. lose the image when I regenerated yes. and I'd be like, oh, I like the one before. Yeah. So this is a way to fix that problem. I and love that because that's an issue that I have. Yeah. Um, and I didn't even know that you can set it as a reference image like that. So I'm adding that to my little toolbox right now. <laughs> yes. And, and not only the reference image, but let's say um, you want to just now see similar versions mm -hmm. of this. Click on show similar. And now the variations are going to become even more subtle. So it's a way to have more control. Well, I thought it would be more yeah. subtle. Yeah. But it's just not more subtle. It should be more subtle. Um, but it's going to keep using the same language that it generated mm -hmm. with this, or that it used to generate this image. You can also hit the heart up here and add this to your favorites. Lovely. And you can view all your favorites so you don't lose images, which was incredibly frustrating yes. for me uh, <laughs> when I first started beginning to work in firefly <laughs> so um can you quickly um heather sorry can you show yeah. again how to save um someone just asked can you go over how to save as a reference yes just one okay. more time so you want to click so are you asking how to save this image to your favorites so they're saying how to save as a reference. So maybe if you were to, I'm assuming if you were to pick a picture that you want it to be your reference, like you did, like use as a reference image. Yes. Um, so, and then also um, the tip that you just went over of saving it. So it saves to your favorites overall that uh, just to cover those both bases. Okay. Yes. So you hover over the image. You're going to see this edit bar appear on the top left. Click on that and it's going to give you some options. You can use a generative fill here too, um, but I'm gonna get into that in Adobe Express in a minute. I just like to work in there. <laughs> um, you can apply filters and adjustments. You can remove the background. You can add text, you can do all this stuff. But in order to save the reference image, 
just scroll down and click right here, use as reference image. And then once you do that, you'll know you've done it because on the left side, you will see this pop-up menu that says reference image, and then you'll see the slider bar. So I'm just going to slide it. I'm going to do a more extreme example here. I'm going to go way over to the prompt. Okay. And hit refresh. And that's going to change the way that the images yeah. are rendered. That's eventually, there we go. <laughs> yeah. So, you, you know, it's really nice if you've narrowed it down, you've got your look, you, you want to be able to keep generating in the same look without it going, mm -hmm. you know, you can decide how far and how extreme uh, you want to change the image. And then let's say this one. I want to save this. So I want to be able to refer to this later without having to download every image, mm -hmm. hit the heart and it's just saved it to my favorites. Beautiful. Right Thank okay. you. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do one example here where I'm going to take Synthwave off in the description bar and instead I'm going to pick it here in the styles. I'm going to generate it again mm. so we can see the difference. That'll be interesting. Oh, okay. So it, it's pretty much the same. It's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. If I have Synthwave and this checked, it's it will flatten out the image. I don't recommend doing I put it in one or the other. Okay. Also in Firefly down here at the bottom under color and tone, light and composition, mm -hmm. you have some other options. These options are not in Express. These are only in Firefly. So if you want to really work on an image, um, you might want to start here in Firefly first and then export to Express, which mm -hmm. we'll do in just a second, just because there's a few more settings. If you're not going to mess with the composition, lighting, color and tone here, then you can create this exact same image in Express. You don't even have to do two steps. It's oh, really up to you. Yeah. So let me just, I'm going to pull these. So for lighting, you've got backlighting, dramatic lighting, golden hour, studio lighting, low lighting. These are all great options. Mm -hmm. And composition, our camera angles, basically, except for our blurry background, which basically are depth of field. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have all these options that you can pick. I'm on none right now because for this image, I just want it straight ahead, nothing fancy. Mm -hmm. But I could, well, let's just do one just to try. Let's do shot from above and let's see what that does. Ooh. Let's see if it doesn't. If it doesn't give you that, I have a workaround. Yeah, okay. okay. So you can put that in the description. You can put view from above like this. And if you want to turn off one of these styles, I'm going to turn off the shot from above. I'm just going to X out. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Nice and I'm, there. Yeah, just X out. I'm also going to get rid of art here. And let's just have no style. And I'm going to hit generate. We'll see if it gets it. I really just love with Adobe Fly Firefly how many <sighs> options you can play around with. Okay, so is it doing from above? When it, so it's, it's is giving it like, me. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> it's giving the the side of the diamond instead of the very top yeah, of the it, diamond. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this top view instead. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of like, um, I'm going to get rid of from above. We're just going to say top view. As you get into Firefly and AI generators and you start experimenting with the language, you begin, I have a list of it's still not freaking <laughs> I have a list of terms that I use a lot. Um, mm. I have, I did get this to work, of course, yesterday. <laughs> we will keep playing with this, but um, I have a list of terms that I use in my notes mm. that generally create rep repetitive results that I want. Um, and you'll sort of get into the groove of how to write, how to describe certain imagery mm -hmm. to the AI generator. Um, and you'll get a sense of what it can do and what it can't do. Mm -hmm. 
if you want to reference a particular art genre, you might put something like, in, you could say, um, there are two ways to do it. You can put in the style of like Art Deco, or you literally mm -hmm. could just put, I just could put Art Deco in here. And now it's going to pull from that particular genre where it mm. should, should. I like that you have a list of um, different um, prompts and words that you've used that, that have worked in the past. And that's a really good tip to try to kind of remain, keep that consistency. And like, you just, you don't have to go through remembering, just keeping an a ongoing list is a really, really good tip. Yeah, because then you can work faster. If mm -hmm. you're like, okay, I know this, this, and this does this then you can use that in your workflow and it's already super fast, but why not go faster? Exactly. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to show you now how you would just export this right into Adobe Express. So the way you do that is up here in the top, you'll see this little box with an arrow. Mm -hmm. You want to click on that and it's going to give you some options. Oops here. So you have download, copy link, copy image, and edit in Adobe Express. So if you click on that, this is going to open Adobe Express. Do, do, do. Here oh. we are in Adobe Express. Looking easy. And we do have a question. Mm -hmm. um, somebody did ask, um, can you share those notes with us? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> or what are so, some like your top, let's say your top, like maybe two or three. So some, some things that I like to use a lot, um, partly because I create a lot in 3D. So some of the prompts that I use a lot are things like V-Ray or ray tracing or mm -hmm. isometric. Once I use those in my prompts, it really does give me a very 3D uh, realistic feel. Mm -hmm. I also like to use words like shiny, reflective, mm. transparent, that's a really common theme. Um, luminous for lighting. Mm -hmm. If you want something to sort of glow, I use neon an awful lot. You can use things like neon accents, neon flex. Mm -hmm. So be really descriptive that way. Those are some like right off the top of my head, things I use all the time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But I I'm do not like... giving you, I'm not giving away my whole list. No way. <laughs> So sorry, but you, you know, you, you, you dropped a little nugget for us. That's all we need. <laughs> sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying you just dropped a little nugget for us and you're pointing us in the right direction of just making sure we're being descriptive. I think that's the overall point. Just be descriptive with what it is that you want. Um, and I also, someone made a comment before that overall, like using Adobe Firefly is a game changer because you're using like your individual knowledge to be more um, accurate in your result. So it's like a merge between artificial and human intelligence. So you might have a vision of what you want and find the descriptive words of what that looks like, put it into Adobe Firefly and then see what that artificial title just gives you as well and kind of find that balance between the two. So I like that for sure. Yeah, I mean, you're basically seeing how when you see the work people create in AI and it's, it's someone who's been in it for a while, you're getting to kind of get a sense of their personality and how they think and their history and their background. It's sort of like being an art director on steroids. Mm -hmm. Yep. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree completely. I, I am in love with AI and I'm incredibly grateful um, because it speeds up my workflow so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Okay, so I went from um, Firefly into Adobe Express. Does anybody need me to demo that again, or is that pretty clear? I think that's pretty clear. Pretty clear. Okay, mm -hmm. so here we are in Adobe Express, and you can see, again, you have a lot of the um, same things. You have styles. You can alter the prompt up here, just like we were doing before. There are content types, just like before but you don't have some of the options that you did in Firefly. Mm -hmm. um, so this is one way to create it. You could bring it in. The way I like to work is um, if I'm making style frames, I want to create them directly in Adobe Express. And the reason is I can create a template here that I can just plug the images in without having to go back and forth. And I'm all about easy and fast. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to start over here in Express and we'll just build something. 
from scratch here. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Express. And the way I like to build templates is I like to hit this plus key over here on the mm -hmm. left bar. And I'm going to pick a square because this storyboard is for social media and it's a book ended storyboard. So what that means, it's the same frame at the beginning and the same frame mm. at the end. So it loops. So when I create this template here, I want it to be the same aspect ratio. Okay. So you're going to see all of these options. If you are going to create content, it just gives you a lot of things that you can use mm -hmm. and pull into this right away, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go over here to the media button. And this basically is Firefly. It's an AI generator within Adobe Express. I'm going to click text to image here in the mm -hmm. top picking square again, and this is going to allow me to generate an image and you can adjust the scale. So I'm hitting shift and option here and you'll see it's showing me the measurement I want. Mm -hmm. I kind of know where I want this to be. So I'm going to stretch this out just a little bit bigger and then I'm going to hit shift and move this up. And the reason I'm doing that is, oops, I had two frames in there. I'm going to enter some text below here because style frames always have text describing what you're looking at for your clients so they don't mm -hmm. have to think, which is good. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, I'm also going to come up here to the top and I'm going to change the title of this so I know what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the title. Oh, more typing. Uh, Eye of the Beholder. Okay. And then I'm going to put a dash and we're going to call this style frame one. All right. Perfect. So now Keeps I know organized too. <laughs> I love organization. Everything <laughs> in the world must be very organized. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what you can do here. So if you're curious, if you created a bunch of these and you're like, where am I? I don't know what page I'm on. If you come up here to the top right bar, you'll see it says one and it's showing me pages. If I click on this, it shows me I have one page. If I had created the template, you would see a whole bunch of pages in here, but we're not there yet. So I'm going to X out. We're back on the same screen now. And I'm going to add some text because I'm creating a template. So I'm going to hit this text. Uh, icon here on the left and I'm going to create custom text because for me this is a custom template so I hit add your text and of course it puts it right in <laughs> the wrong place so you want to grab this and hit uh, shift come on and drag it down and then I'm going to adjust the size of this square and again you'll see when you're centered you're going to get your purple line mm -hmm. And I'm going to change the size of this text. Um, there are options over here on the left. You can see it's giving you a lot of text options. You can mm -hmm. pick your typeface, which I'm going to go with a grotesque because I like that typeface. Um, I'm going to adjust the size. And if you click in the middle of the number here, it just gives you all these options. We're going to go a little smaller. And then I'm going to stretch out my text box here. So we can write some stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to try and grab it. <laughs> Give me that. Give me it there. Okay. And so I'm going to center this and then I'm going to write a description of what we're going to see here. So this is going to say style frame one, and this is going to be a pink or pink diamond on a, so much typing pink back <laughs> okay so that's a, a, the initial style frame that's what we're going to create mm -hmm. okay so now i've got this template and let's create an image here so i've clicked on this it brings up the dialog box right away so i can add a prompt and we're going to do the same thing we did before so on this i'm going to start with a very generic image so we're going to do a diamond oops, on a pink background. 
Now, if you've ever created style frames for clients, you know this could probably take you half a day where you're drawing mm -hmm. stuff in Illustrator Photoshop and you're trying to figure out what style, what style. Mm -hmm. So this allows me to flip through styles very, very quickly and decide what I want. I already have my concept in mind. I know from the script, we're gonna create a diamond on a pink background that is the opening frame. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we have generic images. I'm gonna load more. <laughs> loading, loading. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. And the first image I know I want to create, I want to create sort of a graphic 2D image that's a little mm. bit flat, uh, was a super trendy shape a while ago. So I'm going to switch from art to graphic. And then I think what I want to do here is we are going to go through some of these i want to do a vector look so mm. i'm going to click that and generate do, do, do. any questions while i'm moving no through i this? think we're good for now and I, what i'm noticing is that's when you're changing these prompts it's changing the image that you have uh, yes. within your document there which is also nice yes it's kind of updating it yes it's it's uh this is like so great for style frames. This is so great. Okay, so I'm I think this one is okay. So I'm gonna say we have style frame one done. So let's say I want to now duplicate this as a template. Um, I'm gonna create at least two more style frames. So what I'm gonna do is go back up here to these pages. And you'll see you have some options here. Mm -hmm. If you click on these three dots, mm -hmm. you'll see duplicate page. So I'm going to click on this. There's one. Perfect. And I'm going to do it again. Two. So now we have three templates. Mm -hmm. Boom. Easy, fast. Easy, fast. And you saved yourself time. <laughs> so much time. So <laughs> I want to just change this image now for our second style direction mm -hmm. as well as the description. So I've clicked on it. It lights up. And now I'm going to X out and you can tell what page you're on because at the top here, it mm -hmm. says two of three, even though the description is the same. So I need to update this description to say mm. style frame two, but that just helps you keep track of where you're at. And we'll update this description two. And this time what we're going to do is we are going to create a photorealistic Uh, photorealistic and that should not be capitalized okay photorealistic mm -hmm. diamond on a pink background perfect okay so i'm going to click into this diamond down here you're going to click on text to image to bring us back into this prompt bar and i don't want the vector look so i'm going to uncheck it mm -hmm. and I'm going to do this two ways. First, I'm going to type photorealistic and then we'll play with the actual styles. Okay. So we're going to type photo. I think I photo and I'll realistic. <laughs> I'm going to go into my, my special fix my spelling. <laughs> okay. Generate. So for photorealistic, it's really interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I do notice that if I add it into mm -hmm. the prompt, it gives me um, a very specific kind of look. Okay. If I move here out of graphic, which I'll do in just a minute, to none or photo, it's going to look totally different. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to change the setting. So let's go to photo first. I'm intrigued to see what it looks like very different so ah. now you can see it's a lot more the resolution is a lot mm -hmm. sharper the faceted uh look is a lot clearer mm -hmm. if i take this out of photo and i go to none same prompt mm -hmm. now we are oh. hyper realistic okay so the styles really matter uh, the way you set them and the way you speak to them. Partly it's yeah. because I have photorealistic in the description. Mm -hmm. So if I have the content type set to none, mm -hmm. it gives me more of the result that 
I think I want mm -hmm. for this, which is extremely faceted as if you took a picture. Yeah, which is, it's that's a great point as far as like just being able to, if there's something that you want, be very specific and make sure that you're just being mindful of like the content type, the style that you're clicking on, because that's going to be able to give you more so what you want or give you something completely opposite if you're not mindful of that. Yeah, I, I really think get in here and play with the content type and the mm -hmm. styles. Um, use prompts, use the use the actual phrase in your prompt, but also try it in the styles. It's There are so many options here. Um, I'm just going to go through really quick. You can also, in effects, mm -hmm. you can change your image to black and white. You can colorize it. You can do a tone it, uh, tint it. You can do all of these things. But what's great is that this is all in one program. Yep. So if I'm in a rush and I need to create style frames right now for a client, I can just do it without mm -hmm. much thought. Um, you can also come in here and adjust lighting, color, details, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. We're not animating, so I'm not going to touch that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we have the second one. I think this is pretty great. I'm going to move up here to these little pages again in the top bar. Perfect. And, and now we Robert made a comment just in general. I, I found this yeah. fascinating. He said that um, said I have noted that some of Firefly gives me better results of my native in my native language that is Swedish. Yeah, so wow. it's so interesting. That wow. that's really interesting too about how the different languages mm -hmm. have different outcomes Absolutely. based on the way that the the AI was trained. I would love actually to do more research into that because I think mm -hmm. it's so interesting. No, I do as well. That's I I didn't even I hadn't even had the thought of like how this would translate into different languages. Um and so that's that's beautiful. Yeah. I, I love it. And I actually I'm really excited for the next two years. I think we'll see some huge jumps in AI mm. and I'm curious to see um, what happens as it spreads across the globe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have our first look. Great. Second look. Great. Third look. Um, I need to work on this mm -hmm. one next. So I'm just going to click on it and then I'm going to X out here. Here we are. And at the top, page three of three, so you know where you are. And we're going to change the title here to three. Perfect. Yay. And, and Caroline down, down. said that you are an AI guru. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I, I'm obsessed. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I really do. Um, okay, so we're going to create a third look. And so for this look, I'm going to make this 3D because we've been talking mm. about this. So let me fix that. D oh, typing. Okay, so we're going to create a 3D diamond on a pink background. And I'm going to hit this text to image again. So we're back in the bar. I'm going to get rid of this style. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that I'm in graphic for this one. And then at the top, I'm going to put 3D in the prompt and we're going to do two different types of 3D here and we'll just see what this generates. And what I'm looking for for the 3D is for it to look, you know, like it has a shadow like that. Mm -hmm. um, as if you could reach out and touch it. I have to decide though, as I'm looking at these images, how 3D do I want this? Do I still mm. want to have a little bit of a cartoony feel, which this does, or do mm. I want this to be somewhere in between uh, 3D modeling and a photo? So there's some decision making. Um, let me go under here. So under themes, there's a 3D art. Mm. And let's see, there's also looking for this one maybe maybe just do 3d if i don't see it okay we're just going to go with 3d art so i'm going to hit generate and you can see what happens now because i've got 3d in the title and i'm mm -hmm. using a 3d art style it doesn't change that much mm -hmm. okay so if i wrote if i 
I'm going to type V-Ray Diamond, but I'm going to use a 3D style. And that's going to give us a different look. Perfect. You could also use isometric here. That's another um, sort of 3D style. Mm -hmm. Boom. Mm, there we go. Yep. So if you use a, a 3D, some 3D terminology in the prompt, and then you connect it to a 3D mm -hmm. style, you create a different look. So oh, perfect. And Brian made a comment um, saying that um, they also think that it could be the order in which people speak. Like, you know, maybe when we were talking about languages, Spanish, oh, yeah. you know, when you speak in Spanish, mostly descriptive words are coming secondary and then putting the subject first. Or And then also mentioned that Terry White, another creator, has said that the order placed in the prompt matters with the first terms getting preference. And that yes. could be a reason why that also um, creates that difference. That's true. And I, I was curious about this because there is definitely a prompt structure. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because in Firefly, it does matter to a point, mm -hmm. um, but the prompts in Firefly are, it's like Firefly wants a little bit of a shorter, less complicated, shorter prompt. Mm -hmm. um, and it's pretty good at giving me exactly what I want without too many errors which is wonderful, but it's true. The very first word that you type mm -hmm. is the weighted the most heavily versus at the end. Mm, very, very good. Oh, exciting. And real quickly, I also want to note that we are midway through our live stream oh. and want to remind y'all that if you would like to nominate yourself or someone that you know to be a guest on Adobe Live, please sure to submit the recommendations for creatives in the tab on Behance. So if you look right above the chat, you're going to see a guest recommendations button. Feel free to click that, share, um, recommend yourself, recommend a friend. Um, that way we can get some other cre creative, amazing creatives on this platform. That would be great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to come up here again to our little pages. And now we have three looks. I have just created a style frame mm -hmm. with a description. And let's say you would like to send this to a client. So I'm going to move you over there. Um, how you would do that is you are going to, let me grab these. Okay, so how you do that is you're going to click this download button at the top. Ugh. And you'll see you can use select page or select all pages. Mm -hmm. And if you hit this menu bar, it allows you to export this as a multi, it would be a multi document PDF. So you could do that and you could send it right to your client and your style frames are done. Or you can come up here to the little person. And if you want to just share it to them, you can, you can add the email and say, here's my, here are my style frames if you're uh, email averse. So um, that is just a really quick demo of how you can create style frames super quick in Adobe Express, um, or you can start in Firefly and just come right into Express if you want. Oh, love it. Thank you so much for showing that, Heather. And then some yeah. other comments that we have coming in. This late, this um, structural part for our um, prompts is still conversation. Oh, no, um, I'm happy to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, Marsha shared that um, something that Paul Tranny said, and um, the chat is moving. Hold on. Um, <laughs> Paul Tranny posted that the structure of an AI art prompt is that you start with your subject plus description plus context yes. plus style equals yes. your image. So thank you so much, Marsha, for sharing that equation for us. I really do like that. Heather said that you should share more of your storyboards, that she is learning more of a new side of you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, Robert shared that they've used a song text as a prompt to get 95% correct result. And then that on it, and that also being in Swedish. And so awesome. Those are a lot of a lot what? of and then other people are giving you praises so <laughs> oh thank you what's a song text what do I you think, mean i think maybe like a like lyrics from a song right now a uh, song text no. i don't know actually robert q i could be um not understanding that so what do you mean by song yeah. text as a prompt yes, that's please. kind of interesting i would love to hear what yes what you mean izzy said i'm a fan of heather <laughs> oh thank you izzy oh yeah he said lyrics Lyrics. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so interesting. That's very, I love very that. interesting. I would never have thought to do no, that. No, that's why I read it. I was like, it must be lyrics, but I never would have thought that that would work. So that's actually a very, very great tip. 
I love that. I'm going to copy you. <laughs> I am too. Cause I, I like to use music as a, um, a lot of, ins- a lot of my inspiration comes from, you know, a lot of different things, but music is one of them. So sometimes you hear something that gives you a visual. So maybe if there's a way to take a lyric and create par- prompts that I can use for my mood boards, my storyboards, that would be a good idea that I didn't think about before. <laughs> yeah. I'd love that. I'm the same way. I'm completely music motivated. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now for the next phase, and we'll see how far we get. Um, So for this next phase, what I'd like to do is we're going to pick, or I've picked while you were not here, a style Mm -hmm. frame direction. And then I've deconstructed the script. So Mm -hmm. the title of the script is In the Eye of the Beholder. And I have broken it down into an intro, uh, scene two, the voiceovers are broken down here. So we can take each section now into Photoshop and begin building some boards. Mm -hmm. So um, for this one, we have the intro, which is, I'm sure you know this by now, pink diamond rotating in 3D. The diamond is brilliantly lit, casting sparkling reflections around the scene. So that's the action. And then the voiceover is beauty isn't confined to one place, one moment, or one perspective. So the word perspective here is the key word in this script. What we want to do is really play with that. So what's going to happen in the second scene is the camera is going to slowly zoom in on the diamond Mm -hmm. and the diamond is going to shift to a top view, which we were trying to create Mm -hmm. earlier, which I have created and we will create. Um, (laughs) And that's going to play with the, the word perspective. So I'm going to start tying the script to the action. Um, and then as scene three, as the camera gets closer, the diamond begins to transform and we start to see, we back out and see eyes of a person who blinks, the scene shifts and we'll go into all this, uh, when we get into the board, but basically I've gone through and deconstructed the whole script for you. Oh, lovely. <laughs> okay. So let's move over to the Photoshop here. Let me grab it. Boop. All right. So I've gone through and I've created um, some of these boards already. If you have never created an artboard in Photoshop, I'm just going to quickly demo that. You would come up here and choose File New. And then I have it set there. But if you underneath the name, there is a document type. You would Mm. click on Artboard, hit OK. And then if you come up here into your toolbar, you'll see on the top right, there's this little square shape. That is the artboard selector. Mm. So if I am on this, if I select this artboard and I want to create more of these, Mm. uh, I would drag around it and you will see these little plus symbols. And whatever uh, plus I pick is the way that the artboard will duplicate itself. So. If I want to go to the right, I'm just going to hit right. And we've just made a whole bunch of artboards. I'm going to zoom out by hitting the magnifying tool and option. And I'm using the space bar to move around. Here you go. So now you have, I've just created six artboards. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move you over. And you can see them here in my layers. Um, And then I would just go through and rename the Mm -hmm. artboards. But... I've already created them here. (laughs) Um, And what I'd like to do is I'd like to come into some of these boards and change some of the components with generative fill. So um, I'm going to come here into artboard three, four, sorry, four. And I have two people here who look exactly the same, but I like the clothes. I like the look. I like the hair. Mm -hmm but I want to change the face. So what I'm going to do is come up here to the toolbar bar and grab the lasso tool. And you don't have to be too exact with this, but I'm just going to go around his face. And that's going to give me this generative fill bar. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to type what I'd like to see and we'll see if it will give it to me. So I'm going to type in, let's do Asian man. And because his hair is pink, I want to make sure that I specify his hair is pink 
so mm. that generative fill understands what I want it to change. Otherwise, you could get some rando face that doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense. So you want to give it some clues about what you want it to do. Yeah. So we're going to say pink. Well, that wasn't very nice. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. Okay. I keep typing, oink. That is not <laughs> nice. That is so not nice. Oh, I'm having some uh, subconscious moments here. Okay, Asian man, pink hair. And we're going to wait. It's generating a new image for me. <laughs> oh, okay. So now we have a brand new face. Um, it gives me some options. That one is actually mm -hmm. pretty good. Let's look at one more. Ooh, I kind of like this one. What I really love is what I wanted was all of the outfits to be as close together as mm. possible. So now he's got the exact same outfit, same look, same hair, mm -hmm. which I want, but his face is completely it's different. different. Wow. In frame four, you can see what it's done. Oh, I can okay, turn this perfect. off and on. So I could technically generate several faces here if I wanted, mm -hmm. um, save them, use them, alter them, but it really gives you a lot of flexibility as mm -hmm. far as making um, specific changes. Everything else looks like you want it. Okay, so this storyboard actually involves type. So what I'm gonna do is I'd like to go back over to Firefly and we're gonna generate some typography. I want the text here and it's going to be the word beautiful. I want to create it in three sections so I can really play with it um, because it's going to be a flattened image, a PNG. Um, and it just gives me, I can very quickly create some variations and drop out the background. This text is going to have sort of a liquid mercury rainbow feel to it um, to kind of match. I've kind of got as you can see this, I've got mm -hmm. a little bit of this uh, psychedelic thing going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love colors. I don't know if you notice that. I like really bright <laughs> colors. <laughs> I've noticed, <laughs> but I can say the same. This is, it's I. It's just it's so eye-catching. Yeah, right. This is very, very modern. And mm -hmm. also the, the whole theme of this script is um, about beauty not fitting in a particular box shape you know uh genre it's it beauty is its own thing mm -hmm. so i'm trying to create this very loose bright beautiful happy non-traditional sort of look mm -hmm. okay so let's go back do 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 come on let's go back into let's go here to firefly i'm gonna click the a at the top to come back to the home screen and we are going to go into text effects mm. and hello um so text effects you enter your text here on the left if you haven't done it and then you describe here on the right what you like so i'm going to do this um in three three chunks i guess the best way to put it mm -hmm. so the first one i want to type b e <laughs> U-T-I. Well, we'll just do B-E-A-U-T because I want okay. the I to be separate. I'm going to play mm, with the concept okay. on the I. And then we're going to type for the prompt here. We're going to say liquid, mercury, rainbow, and enter. And this should give me a very bright, yep. Mm. interesting type of text and I'm waiting for him to come in. And then below you can kind of um, move through and see if there's a variation that you'd like better. Go, go, go. Ooh, oh. I like the drips. I really like the yeah, drips. Yeah, I really like this one. I was like, I think that might be the one. This one might be overkill. Let's look at the sky. Yeah. Mm. There it is. Yeah, I like I think I like the second one. Same. And then this one. Let's see if we can. I haven't played too much with um the text effects in um Firefly. And that's this is something I'm actually intrigued in finding ways that I can incorporate this more into my own work. 
Yeah, I've I've found with this, um, you know, the finding ways to work with this where it's a little bit more flexible, mm-hmm. and I can bring it in is to you know create it in chunks and create mm. sort make them into objects, and then I can really play with this. Yeah. Um, so I like this look. I think this look is pretty close to uh, what I want. And you can do the same thing here. You can add this to your favorites, just like we did earlier, if you do not want to lose this. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm going to hit the heart. And it says you can view it in favorites. If I click on this, it'll take me to another screen. So I'm not going to do it right now, but you can view all of your favorites there. Okay, so I think this one's good. It's on a transparent background. I've specified the transparent Mm -hmm. background. Let me just move this down here in the color. If I wanted a background, I can just click on this and it will fill in the background. You can do the same thing with the text color, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to leave it uh, transparent because that's what I want. Okay, so I'm coming up to the top. Hold on. If you come up here and you click this and you're going to see download copy image, and the same thing, I could bring this right into Adobe Express just like we did earlier. Mm-hmm. But what I want to do is I'm going to download it. Okay, there it is. And then we're going to come over here into frame four. And we're going to place linked. Izzy, I'm with you, and the download folder needs to be cleaned out. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so here we are. So what I want to do now is I'm going to play with the placement and the scale. So I'm going to hit Command-T for Transform. I'm going to hit Shift-Option, and I'm going to scale this down and kind of figure out where it goes. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I like the drips underneath. Agreed. So now we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna change this to the letter I. I'm gonna use the same prompt, generate. And we'll see what that does. Mm -hmm. I think I want a lowercase I. I was gonna, I yeah, I was gonna ask if it needs to be lowercase or if you want to keep it. Yeah. There we go. If we want it to look good. Also, because the dot you could play with. Wow. Um. Mm-hmm. At the top. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That's I like kinda, this one. I like the drips. It yeah. gives it a nice three dimensional effect. Mm-hmm. Sky, uh, I think this is the one. Yeah, the drips are so nice. And so I'm going to save this again to my favorites so I can get mm-hmm. pick it up later if I want. And then I'm going to download it. Here we are. Okay. So beautiful. <laughs> it is. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I just really like the drips. The drips are so cute. <laughs> I do too. And, it, you know, that's is you're working uh, in the text generator or Adobe Firefly, if you can create um, images that have drips or extend a mm-hmm. little bit, it's kind of a nice added way to work with this text. Mm-hmm. I feel like it looks a little more organic. It's tying into the drippy background I already mm-hmm. have here. And it's just a way to integrate it. Um, because I, I, I like you, I was thinking about how do I work with this text? It's so interesting. Yeah. It's so fast. How can I make this work? And I think taking it apart, even if I did this more letter by letter, which we won't have time to do today. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is definitely a way to work with this and create really beautiful effects super fast. Okay, so let's do the last part of the text. T-I-F-U-L-L. Oops, we don't want that. I, I wish somebody could type for me. <laughs> <laughs> Typing on a live stream is not is not always it's easy. Oh, it's not okay. always easy at all. No. Okay, and this is good too. I'm just mm-hmm. gonna click through and look at these. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. Yeah. We're going to go. It's always the drips. <laughs> it's a drips. So I'm going to favorites. We're going to download. Download. Okay. Here we are. And we'll place this. Oop. Okay. And again, I'm hitting. Transform, shifting, push and shift. Oops, come, on. come back. There we go. Okay, so I don't know why you're not showing mm. up suddenly. Where's that? Oh, there you are. I don't know. Okay, so I would play with this composition more, probably. Mm -hmm. If I had more time, I would fuss with this forever. But you get the general just so you could see how. Our script now, our storytelling, we're starting with a straight on view. We're playing with the word perspective as we're shifting the diamond here to another perspective, zooming into this guy's eyes where they're floating diamonds. And for this guy, um, all of this was created in Firefly as mm -hmm. well earlier. And um, he is on one layer. Oh, wow. So you can drop out the background, which we can do on our next one. Um, and then these diamonds are the same thing. We created some similar ones. I dropped out the background mm -hmm. and placed them here. Oh, and wow. then this is just a textured background. It's liquid mercury um, background. And I have color burn for the setting. So oh, it's wow. sort of warm colors come forward, cool colors go back. So it's just creating some depth. I love how you pull that all together because I was going to ask if that was just want like generated just as such or if you just pull different app, different um things that you've generated and created that that's so beautiful yeah i did it just like i did with the text yes um, so it allows you so you can create a lot of different imagery in firefly and mm -hmm. adobe express drop out the background bring it into photoshop and play with it um, to create depth. And what's great for me for animation is when things are on layers like this, once I bring it into After Effects, it makes my job so much mm -hmm. easier. If I have a flattened image, then I have to go in here and do it myself. Yeah, It's a second step. So you can just think about doing that right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's go to this next guy. Any other questions while I am? No, I think we're good so far. If you all have any questions, be sure to drop them in the chat. We are about uh, less than 20 minutes from completing. So Woo! if y'all have any questions, we've been moving around. It's been moving <laughs> quick, quick. <laughs> but if y'all have any questions, be sure to drop them in the chat. I know that for me, I think um, trying to find, I, I really... As of creative, I've only used Adobe Firefly when it came to like making quick mood boards and things of that nature. But I just love how I can just visually, there's just so much I'm I'm learning about how much further I can take it um, and, and how much more control I can have over the images I create as well. Yes, you can have total control and very quickly in what would normally take me hours yes this is you know what this is 90 this can be 90 minutes and i did this with a presentation and i'm going to come out of this with some rough storyboards that i could very easily go in and spend another hour tweaking and i'm done mm -hmm. this would take me so much more time yep. normally so this is a fantastic thing okay so for this frame i've created a texture here in firefly and the prompt wow. for this again was liquid mercury rainbow um, but for this one, I put texture at the end of it. What I want for this frame is I want to create a diamond that's coming out of this oozy, goopy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to eventually bring us back to this first frame because okay. this animation is looping. So the mm -hmm. first and the end frames need to be the same. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go back here again into come back into firefly and we are going to attempt to create a diamond from the top view so <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna do we're gonna say we're gonna make it round because otherwise it might give us something angular so we're going to say round top of diamond 
And I'm going to give it a pink background, even though I'm going to drop out the background. I want the highlights and the color to be the same or consistent as the other images. So let's see what we get. Ew, this is so bad. Okay. <laughs> this is not what I want. <laughs> so we're going to move from art, <clears throat> excuse me, to graphic and try it again. This is not what I want at all. Hopefully this will be better. Fingers crossed. We are getting oh. some weird stuff. <laughs> so that's all right. This is part of the process. Um, yep. Let's try. I'm going to get rid of. Sometimes if you put of the A, um, the AI doesn't always love that. Mm. Sometimes it's better just to be a little bit more uh, straight ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you meander, whoa, with your words. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is not cooperating with me. So we're going to take off the top and we're just going to start simple. It's so interesting how you can generate something so easily the first time, but if you give mm -hmm. it too much in the beginning, it doesn't understand. And now we're getting a background. Mm -hmm. Yep. So now we're just going to say diamond on A. Perfect. Mm-hmm. You're watching live troubleshooting. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all part of the process. Yay. Here we go. Okay. Perfect. So I needed to be specific about the background coming last, the diamond coming first, not adding 3D mm -hmm. here right off the bat. I'm not in a content type, so it's giving me something that's more hyper real. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to now try this on graphic and let's see what happens. So we just need to pick a diamond here. Oh, it's giving me a top view finally, mm -hmm. but I don't want this to be angular. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put, we'll see if this does something weird. I'm going to put round in front. Let's see if this works. <laughs> ah, mm -hmm. there it is. This okay, is exactly, there we go. this is what I wanted. Beautiful. Okay. And so again, I'm going to hit favorites because I want to save this. And Download. what... Oh, well, sorry. before, <laughs> wait, before. I, I'm jumping, I'm jumping a step. You're way ahead of me. Okay, so before we do that, <laughs> I want to hit remove background on mm. this image because I do not want the background. The background. And this is going to open us up into Adobe Express where the editing magic happens, I think. Yep. And it's, you can see up here, the remove background is going, boom, no background. Isn't that amazing? So quick, so easy. So it's so quick. Oh. oh my God. If you have ever spent a really long time removing backgrounds. Oh my God, I have. <laughs> so many hours. Um, this is a game changer. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to download this. Now, sometimes um, if for some reason this does come in on a white background, out of express mm -hmm. you can remove it again in photoshop which is kind of a pain but um i'm going to just download it we'll and we have a question brian asked um yes. do you think that it would know a cut structure tell me what you mean by cut structure i'm wondering if um brian can you specify more are you do you mean like the cut structure of like the diamond or oh do you mean like the occlusions is that what we're getting at? That's what I'm thinking, but Brian, if you can clarify, so I do not assume <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> so while we're waiting for Brian, they did bring in it on white background. So I'm gonna remove it. So I'm clicked on the image. I'm gonna hit remove background. Boom, mm. there it goes, gone. Okay. okay. So he said like a princess cut. Oh, yes. I think it would. Um, I think that that if you think about descriptors like that, I think AI picks up on it right away. Yes, mm -hmm. I should have. You are correct. <laughs> I should have. I should have done that. It's a very kind way of saying that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. You are correct. Thank you, Brian. Yes. 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 Correct. 
All right, so here we have the diamond and let's say um, I want to make this diamond smaller. So I hit Command T, grab this again. And I'm hitting Shift Option to constrain my proportions. And I want this to start kind of in the background. So it's coming out at us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there we go. So we have from here to here to here to here to here. And Heather, we are getting are we, into like it. the last <laughs> 10 minutes of our stream. <laughs> so I wanted to give you a, a, a kind of a, up or that reminder in case there were anything that anything that you wanted for for sure show us before we begin to sign off in the next maybe six ish, six, seven minutes. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let's just hold on just a minute. I'm just going to turn on this last frame. So the last frame basically would look like something like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to move on after this. But here is the general storyboard structure. Again, just um, to recap, I was able to change the face. We worked with uh, text and we created um, separate text elements that you could bring in. We dropped out the background here. We created style frames in Adobe Express, mm -hmm. which took under five minutes. I just want to mm -hmm. point that out. And we worked in Firefly and talked about some uh, prompt engineering. Let me come back over here. So, which I've already started to recap. Um, here are our style frames that we started with. So we have uh, the different directions and how you do that. And then we moved into storyboards, which we we're just talking about a mm -hmm. second ago. These are more final images where I kind of fussed with it more. I made mm -hmm. a separate glob <laughs> and Fireflame brought it in. Um, and I added using generative fill when I spent some time with this, I was able to add some different colors into his hair mm -hmm. and some bubbles. Um, so you can really play with generative fill and how it uh, creates depth uh, and additional um, colors, images, and subtle changes. Uh, one thing also I want to say about generative fill, if you didn't want these bubbles, let's say it was a mistake, or it mm -hmm. created an image that had some weird pixelization or something you didn't like, if you select it, with the lasso tool and you just hit generative fill without any information, generally it would just correct the problem instantly. Mm -hmm. It would just completely correct it. So you don't need to do much if there are issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just going to come into this part. Um, you can find me if you want at Heather Crank or Cremonti on Instagram, which thank you for dropping that in the feed already. <laughs> I really, really appreciate it. Um, you can stop by and say hello anytime. Um, you can also find me here at cremonti.com. Um, we do a lot of motion graphics and graphic design. And the Ben Design Conference is coming up this fall. I will be there too. Um, if you want to stop by, it's after Adobe Max. Um, and I will be watching Adobe Max with all of you too. So I hope to see you there. That is my general presentation. <laughs> so we've closed <laughs> that part out. <laughs> so there we are. Um, and in general, I just really would like to reiterate thinking and um, having a really strong concept before you begin your prompting as well as your storyboards and style frames mm -hmm. and using AI generative fill, especially to very quickly, rapidly prototype your ideas for your clients. Mm. It's, it allows me to operate as a much bigger team than I actually am. It, it's, it's an amazing thing. Yeah. It's, it's so incredible. Uh, if, if you don't mind, can we go back to the, yes. the, um, artboard that you created? I'm just so, we can so in, like just in awe of like the entire process thus far and how you just kind of took it from that storyboard into that you know, really just come from a concept and a script to create the entire artboard. So what would your, just as we're starting to close, what would your, now that that artboard has been created in Photoshop, would you export it? What would you be, what would those next steps look like for you? Yes. So the next steps would be that I would export this usually for my clients as a PDF. Mm -hmm. um, and then we would go through rounds of revisions. Um, a lot of times 
we'll go through two or three variations of these storyboards um, mm -hmm. where we'll be changing frames or changing faces um, or changing this. <laughs> Generally, I, I actually put my foot down with changing scripts. I set limits on how often I will allow people to do that in the time frame because of course it changes your whole process. Mm -hmm. And if you're thinking about that, the animation, just creating this 30 second animation would take 30 hours. Mm -hmm. If there's one change in the script, and this is same, if you're working in InDesign, you also have this nightmare. Um, one change in the copy or the script changes the whole thing. Yeah, I can only imagine. Yes. So um, having the set style frames and the look feel and the script up front before you even jump into this is hugely important mm -hmm. and it will also save you money a lot of money, a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and and while i'm here since we're back in here let's say i'm just going to demo this really quick let's say that um there's some part here on his face make sure mm -hmm. i've selected this frame that I think is um, a problem. Let's say I'm concerned here about this part of his ear and I'd like to fix it. I can just hit generative fill and it's gonna generate. And if that was a problem area, it just would fix it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have to add any text there see it's saying images please review blah 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 mm -hmm. it doesn't like what i did i didn't give it enough zoom in to this guy let's give it a bigger selection mm -hmm. okay here we go generate and it again it will give you several options that you can choose from but mm -hmm. it's a really fast way to clean up um an image so you can see it's just moving the background mm -hmm. like right there. It's giving me something really subtle. So it's just a very easy way to fix problems. Yeah. Um, I was really frustrated at first because I was worried that um, I wouldn't, I would generate these images and they'd be close to being perfect, but then it would require me to have to do more work. And the whole point is to not have to do mm -hmm. <laughs> so much work. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh. What's your, if you don't mind me asking, what's yes. your favorite part throughout? I mean, one, how long have you been doing this? And then two, what is your favorite part throughout this entire process? Um, if oh, you have I mean, one. <laughs> so I've been doing this probably, oh my God, it's been at least 12 years now, wow. I think. Um, yes, I'm definitely a senior level professional. Um, and my favorite part around style frames and storyboard personally is I love the concept development part. Mm -hmm. um, I like coming up with ideas that are really unique and different. Um, and I like challenging people visually. I think there, I'm going to go back to the visual noise part, but mm -hmm. I think that there is a lot of stuff out there that looks the same. And if you can help your clients stand apart a little bit, it's to your benefit, it's to your client's benefit. Mm -hmm. And I think being a little rebellious, being a little different is one of my favorite things. Yeah. Oh, I, and that's why we're rebellious moonbeams. <laughs> that is completely why. That is completely why. And then the last question that I have, and I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat. Jack, thank you so much for dropping Heather's um, Instagram and website link. I'm going to go and just... I'm excited to go and dive in deeper into your work. And then there's a lot of people that are just saying, thank you so much, Heather, for your oh, time. Thank I you. wanted to, I know that we kind of, uh, because I mentioned the time, I know that we didn't really go much into that last page of your storyboard, but I wanted, yes. I, I didn't see it too clearly. I wanted to go back and see oh. what that final page looked like. And then it's, is, just, oh, it's just, the, it's just the repeat. That's true. It's, it, it's going to loop again. It's a looping animation. And this is one of the things too. Let's say if I built this storyboard out and the client's like, we need more happening, you know, mm -hmm. maybe they feel like this is too slow, but you know, it'd be easy to add another board and stretch this out. But what I'm really focusing on in these storyboards is how do I get from here to here? 
tra- mm. the transition. This is the really hard part. Mm-hmm. So the boards are basically kind of marking the main sections that I'm going to hit. Like these are important points. This is where really important voiceover occurs. And once I move into animation, then my job, the hardest part of my job is figuring out what happens here. That and that sense. would be called an animatic where you mm. would start creating the first five seconds or 10 seconds of the animation, maybe going from this frame to this frame. Mm-hmm. And that would allow you to make sure your client is good with the way that it's moving mm. and the transition is clear. So, mm. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Heather, uh, truly for taking us through. I've learned so much and there's so much I've added into my uh, my little toolbox and things I want to incorporate <laughs> into my just photography workflow, especially just oh. looking for inspiration. So I do appreciate that. And thank you all so much for joining us for another Adobe Live. want to encourage you to stay tuned for Adobe Firefly Live weekly meetup where you can find your creative mm-hmm. co-pilot. Um, this is going to be a space where you can learn how to speed up your workflows and take your sketches, ideas, and content concepts to fill us to finish illustrations and that designs with Fabiola Lara. So until next time, I can't wait to see you again. If you missed this live, you can go ahead and rewatch it. The replay will be available as well. And make sure to follow Heather on all of her platforms as well. Have a great evening. Thank or you. Or day, wherever you are. <laughs> Bye. Bye.